Joining me now is Jeff Fout, and Jeff, a belated congratulations on a milestone that you passed, oh, maybe six weeks ago. You had 3,500 victories to your credit now, and as I said, belated congratulations. Uh, thank you very much. It's, uh, it's an honor. It just shows that the work's been good for me. It has been good for you, and today uh, you're going to be well tested, perhaps, because these conditions are not exactly ripe. Uh, you're going to be handling Michael Q in today's third race, which is just a late closer for three-year-old Pacers. And how much consideration do you give this frightful win? Well, the wind's going to have a lot to do with uh, the racing today. The front speed will be it'll be very difficult for it to keep up because they'll have to not only battle the horses, but they'll have to battle this wind that's gusted up to hurricane strength at times, seems like. Let alone the outside post. It's a short field, but you have the six hole. Yes, I do, and, and the horse is okay. Obviously, there's a couple horses in there that uh, are, are better than him, but uh, he'll do well for himself. Uh, he's out of a world champion mare, and every now and then he shows uh, flashes of that. There's a lot of success that goes on in harness racing that has to do with the team effort. There's the conditioner, there's the driver, but there's also equipment today, which is very, very important. And one of the things I wanted to ask you about is a race bike we see a lot here in Ohio, which is the Blackjack bike. Could you describe it for the race fans and what your particular feelings are? Well, the Blackjack, it's a new bike. The, the race bike business is, is very competitive. And this bike was designed by a person who trains and races horses. So he had a little better insight to what he felt a horse needed, you know, to be able to get around the racetrack the best they can than people that just make race bikes. The, uh, uh, for me, I find the Blackjack to be more, of just, more than just a race bike. It's almost a bit of a tool that you can use to help the horse compete in the race and do the best that he can. Uh, it's a well-balanced bike. It tracks perfectly. The uh, the bends in the shafts are ideal as far as being able to keep the horse in straight in line, but also give him the physical freedom he needs to, to do the work that, that you have to do. Plus, it's a, a bit of a lift bike, so but it doesn't have to be a lift bike. So you can apply the lift to the to the horse when you decide that, you, that he needs it, not just because you got the bike on the horse. So whereas some lift bikes might be a problem for certain horses with certain problems, uh, this one doesn't seem to pose that threat as far as lameness goes. Right. Most lift bikes are full-time lift in the race. Uh, these bikes, uh, if you sit up in the bike, there's no lift on the horse. And if you lean back, the angle of the arch uh, immediately gives you a lot of lift. So you can kind of gauge yourself how much lift you're giving the horse. And, uh, you know, some lift, does, some lift does hurt horses, so you can gauge it and use it accordingly. Horse players also like to use a race bike as a handicapping tool. How could the layman quickly point out a blackjack sulky on the today's card, Jeff? Well, they'll be able to tell, first off, it says blackjack on them, all of them come that way. And second off, they'll be able to tell the shafts are a little bit longer. And uh, the arch uh, is angled back uh, behind the seat instead of right up underneath the seat. And uh, the driver sits in a more uh, prone position, so they'll be able to tell. Today's drivers even buy their own race bikes and take them with them. Is this something you've done? Oh, yeah, I started that when the Blackjacks first come out. And for a couple of reasons. One, I thought it was a better bike than what I was riding on for other people. Uh, second off, it, it was a new bike, and it's a well-made, very sturdy race bike, so I feel very safe and secure in it. And um, the third, a lot, some of the bikes that uh, people bring to race horses in are a little antiquated. Uh, the shafts are a little wobbly, and the, and the wheels aren't good, and uh, a lot of people forget how important the wheels are on a race bike. And uh, I keep brand-new wheels on my bike at all times and keep a backup pair at all times, and so we have good bearings, so you know everything can roll as quick and easily and as efficiently as possible. Well, besides making the decision to buy your own race bike and have it with you, Jeff, one of the decisions you made recently was to forego some of your conditioning efforts and go south to Florida. You decided to stay in Ohio full time again and uh, get back to racing with a with a uh, more what would I say aggressive schedule. Yeah, I was just getting tired of all that sand in my toes all the time <laughs> there in Florida. The uh, um, I just decided this year or this past year that uh, I would stay up north and uh, and race a little bit, something I haven't done in almost 20 years. Almost for the last 20 years, I've uh, been going to Florida and not raced in the wintertime. And uh, I just decided it just seemed to be uh, a, a, a move I wanted to try, and it worked out okay for me. I can't complain. Very successful on the half-mile oval, Jeff. And uh, today, of course, you'll be at it again here at Delaware. They say you've, you've moved up to fifth in the all-time winningest drivers list here at Delaware. That's quite an accomplishment. Well, I, I, I didn't. I wasn't aware of that until they announced it yesterday, and uh, you know that puts me in pretty elite company, and uh, you know it gives a person a little self-satisfaction that you know what you've done with your life has uh, you know produced positive results. What's the key for driving on a half? Um, position, position's the whole 
the, the whole key to, the, to, to getting around a half mile track. If you can't get yourself in a good spot, uh, you might as well forget it. You heard it here from Jeff Fout. He certainly knows his way around the half, that's no doubt. When in doubt, they say, go with Fout. <laughs> Bye, Jeff. Thank you. Over to the infield.